This video is for those who are interested in upgrading platforms entirely, uh, but want to pair a CPU like the 5600X, which is a Zen 3 CPU, with a motherboard that might not have the supported BIOS out of the box. So a lot of the B550 and X570 motherboards out there, and most certainly the B450 and X470 boards that are out there that have supported BIOSes, uh, will not just natively support Zen 3. You do have to update your BIOS, but the question arises, how do I update my BIOS if I don't already have a compatible CPU to update my BIOS with? That's where this video may come in handy, assuming you've purchased the correct motherboard. I'm gonna show you how to update your BIOS without a CPU. Stay with me. Activating Windows is as simple as hopping on over to SCD Key's VIP site where you can purchase an OEM Pro key for a little over 10 US dollars. Use a secure payment method like PayPal, receive your key in a matter of seconds, and activate your OS here to remove that annoying watermark. Click the link below to get started and use my offer code GSL for a sweet discount. So in the case of this system here, I have an ASUS Strix B550E Gaming paired with a 5600X. Problem is, this review sample that was sent by ASUS doesn't natively support Zen 3 CPUs like the 5600X, which results in a black screen. You don't get a post. Your system will turn on, but if you have a doctor debug LED, something like that, it might show a 0D code or a 00 code indicating that there's an issue with your CPU. When in reality, the CPU itself is fine, the motherboard just doesn't know how to communicate with the CPU. And that's why BIOS updates for older boards supporting newer CPUs are most of the time required. So what should you look for in a motherboard then? Well, sticking with the ASUS nomenclature, it's called BIOS flashback. It's pretty self-explanatory, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and list the other utilities from the other brands here so that you know what to look for if you're again going to pair an older motherboard with a newer CPU from AMD. Now, in order to take advantage of BIOS flashback with ASUS, all we need is a compatible FAT32 USB drive. It could just be a, an eight or a 16 gig stick. Doesn't need to be anything super fancy, uh, but the formatting is important because if it's not formatted correctly, uh, your system might not recognize the drive. You're gonna also wanna make sure that you don't have anything else on the drive when you plug it into your system. This is important. I've tested this with and without other files, just kind of spontaneously present. And in the case of this board, uh, the, the motherboard didn't even know that there was a, a .cap file in there. The .cap file or .cap file is the BIOS update file. So only have the .cap file in the root of the drive. Now in our case, we downloaded the most recent BIOS update for this motherboard from ASUS's website. This is actually in beta, but I fully tested it and I don't see any problems with it. Once it's downloaded, extract the file and then you're gonna wanna run this BIOS rename tool here. It just opens a little command line and it will rename the BIOS to something that the motherboard will see when we use the BIOS flashback utility. From there, again, ensuring that nothing else is in the root of this drive, we're going to plug it into this port here. This is a very important point. If you do not plug it into this specific port, the one marked with the BIOS flashback functionality, you will not be able to flash into the newer BIOS without a CPU present. Now again, we're using this ASUS board as our guinea pig, but I want to stress that every manufacturer is going to be a bit different in regards to how you update your BIOS without a CPU. So you wanna make sure that you follow those directions. I'll do my best to link as many of those instructionals as I can uh, in the video description. So if you happen to have a Gigabyte or an ASRock or an MSI board or any of the other brands that support a BIOS flashback equivalent function, uh, I'm gonna try to have those down there so that you can reference them. But if you have an ASUS board uh, and it's maybe maybe it's this exact motherboard here, uh, you should be able to follow along verbatim. I don't think that the BIOS flashback tool varies from chip to chip or from board to board. It's all pretty much the same. Now, assuming the thumb drive is installed into the correct USB port in the back of your motherboard, you're gonna wanna make sure that your system is off, but that power is connected and that your power supply switch is flicked on uh, so that in the case of this board here, we see our motherboard LEDs light up. Our system is still off, but the LEDs are on. This is the state we want our computer in when we use the BIOS flashback utility. Now, in the case of this board here, we've got a small button that protrudes next to the port. We're gonna wanna hold this down for three seconds or until we start seeing flashes of green light. Once we let go, we should see this light continue to flash for about 10 or so seconds, after which the light should flash a bit faster. And this will continue until the BIOS is completely updated. So at this point, you don't wanna turn off the power or disconnect it from the wall, I should say. You do not wanna to touch this button anymore. Let it do its thing until the light completely turns off. And once it looks like this, once the light is no longer flashing or shining anymore, 
we know that our BIOS has been successfully updated. If, however, after about 10 or 15 minutes, the light is still blinking or maybe the, the flashing uh, pattern hasn't really changed since you've held down the button, that tells us that the motherboard is not successfully identifying the BIOS in the drive and we maybe need to start over uh, or choose a different BIOS file first. And this is an important point, especially for some other vendors like ASRock, I know specifically requires at times that you update BIOSes in milestones. So if you're walking, the, let's say, the, the very oldest BIOS for that motherboard and you want to update to the very newest BIOS and say that board's been out for a year or two, oftentimes you can't just update immediately to the very newest BIOS out there. You have to kind of update in steps. So there'll be like a, a BIOS from a year ago that you have to update to first and then another BIOS from six months ago and then you can update to the very newest one. So if the BIOS flashback equivalent utility is not working, uh, it's probably because you have to update to that middle BIOS or maybe there's a, a few middle BIOSes you have to update to first before you can rock the newest one. I'm not the biggest fan of how ASUS has described its BIOS functionalities here, uh, but there should be some mention of it, especially on another vendor's site, uh, and some mention that you need to update to this BIOS first before you can update to another one. Now at this point, you can remove the drive. I like to keep it in just to be on the safe side, but technically the BIOS has been updated. The board just needs to do a bit of refreshing. So when you go to actually power on your PC for the first time, you may notice that it boot cycles at least once or twice, and that's that's good. That's a good thing. Don't think that your system is suddenly bricked, right? If it was bricked, it wouldn't post. Uh, but if you see a post or you see some, you know, the, maybe the manufacturer logo, something like that, uh, that's a good sign. If the system shuts off once, twice, even three times, uh, just let it continue doing that. Don't cut it off in the middle of this refreshing. Uh, and then uh, eventually you should boot either into your BIOS or into your operating system if you already have an OS installed on your primary boot drive. And that should be it. At this point, you should be able to either install an operating system uh, or boot into the previous OS that was on your primary drive. Uh, you should be able to get to your uh, home screen in Windows, whatever operating system you're using. And uh, yeah, there you go. So if this video helped, let me know in the comment section below. I'd appreciate that. Give this video a thumbs up if it helped and uh, consider subscribing. I'm going to do more tutorials like this, especially for uh, new PC builders out there. I know this stuff can be daunting, especially the software side of things. So I'm going to do my best to uh, push out more of these small little instructional videos going forward. I appreciate the support. I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.